Okay, welcome to this another lecture on basic surveying. Today we are talking about this module six, and we are in lecture number three. In lecture number three, we will be talking about the satellite station, resection and intersection. Then we'll go to another method of establishing the control, that is trilateration. We'll go. For one more method that is called triangular iteration. Finally, we will see something on adjustment and coordinate computation. What we have done so far, we talked about in our last lecture the basic thing, the shape of a triangle. Why the shape is important? We found it graphically. We found it also mathematically by some analysis that if in a triangle the angles are Between 30 and 120, the error in prop error propagated in computation of the rest of the lengths because as we know the triangulation is a network of triangles where all internal angles are measured. One length, which is called the base length, is also measured. Now, starting from this base length, all internal angles we compute the other lengths. So, in this process, the error which is introduced in the angle measurement. Again, gets introduced in the computation of those lengths. So we say this process to be the error propagation, or maybe the scale error. So we saw it that the scale error in computation of those lengths through a chain of triangles will be less if our angles are well conditioned. So that was a very very important thing which we should keep in mind. Then we saw also about the various signals which we use in the field. The towers. Many times we have to use the towers in the field. So we looked into those aspects also. So now today we'll begin with satellite station. The satellite station is required in triangulation when, for example, let us see what is the triangulation. As I draw here, we keep forming a chain of triangles. This could be any other figure also. Not only triangles, a base quadrilateral or center figure. Let us say we are at some station A. And B, and from this A and B, we are trying to see in a direction as I will highlight towards this direction. We are trying to see in this direction. And over here, our station, the actual station where we can put our instrument, is not visible. Maybe, or maybe something which is more visible, or we want to take that as a station. This is more important point. We want to take something which is here. Let's say C. As our station, and we bisect that C, so that we can also measure our angles at B and A. We prefer to bisect this C because it forms my triangle ABC as well-conditioned triangle. Also, maybe this C is very nicely visible, but there may be a problem later on after visiting that place, or maybe beforehand also you knew it that C has some problem. That the C cannot be occupied. It cannot be occupied. If it, if it cannot be occupied, what is the problem? Well, the problem will be if you have measured the angle theta one, theta two, you can still get the value of theta three. So how will you get this theta three? Theta three you will find by 180 minus theta one plus theta two. But should we go like this? We have been talking all through that no, this is not the right way of getting theta three, because in that case, if there is some error in measurement of theta one, or in theta two, large errors, it can go unnoticed. We cannot determine that. We cannot find it. We should have a way out so that that kind of errors can be located. So for that reason, what we desire, we want to measure. This theta three, also independently, we want to measure theta one, theta two, as well as theta three. All three angles measured, and in that case, if all three angles are measured, we'll find sigma theta is not equal to 180 because of those measurement errors, the observation observation errors. But the condition in this case is C cannot be occupied. So what to do? We somehow wants to get this value of theta three, which is independent of theta one and theta two. 
we do not want to use this relationship, rather we want to do it by some other method. Now, the solution of this is given by satellite station. This is also called many times false station or eccentric, eccentric station. Now, how we proceed in that case? Well, those A and B as we have seen previously also are here A and B where we can measure the angles. Our C is somewhere here. Let us say we had occupied or as you can see in this diagram, this is our measured base length. We are starting from the base length and we go through this chain of triangles. So, by knowing all these angles, we are and this length, we are able to compute this length. So, this length is known. So, length A B is known to us as well as we have measured angle here and angle here. Well, we are not able to measure the angle at this point. This is for example, theta 1, theta 2. What is the value of theta 3? That is something which we want to determine. Well, what is done in that case? We take one more station which is very near to C, so that this station S can be occupied as well as from S we can measure the angles to A, B and C. For example, the angles which are being measured at S are alpha and beta. Well, these angles can be measured as well as the distance S C the resistance D can also be measured. So, this is the condition for this satellite station. We locate this satellite station somewhere around our C, because C can be any high rise tower or maybe a spire of something, you know, something which we cannot occupy, but we can bisect. Well, having done this, establishing this S, measuring D, measuring alpha and measuring beta. Now, what we are trying to do? We are trying to reduce these measurements alpha, beta and d using these alpha, beta and d we want to determine now using this alpha, beta and d we want to determine an independent value of theta 3 which is independent of theta 1 and theta 2. Well, what is the procedure for that? The procedure for that is first of all we will get an approximate of theta 3 which as usual we will find by 180 minus theta 1 plus theta 2. This is the first approximate value of theta 3. Okay. Once we have determined this theta 3, this is the first approximate value using the triangle A, B and C and as well as this known length, length A, B is known to us. What I can do? We can compute length A, C and B, C just by using the sign rule now, I can compute the length A C and B C. Well, once the length A C and B C have been computed, the next step, we are going to the triangle, let us say A, S and C. In triangle A, S, C, I know S C, because this is measured, this is equal to D and I know A C because this is computed. Having known these two as well as the angle A S C, this angle is alpha plus beta. Having known all these, I can apply the sign rule again and I can compute the angle S A C. The angle S A C, if I show it by a different color here, is this angle. So, I write this angle for example, let us say gamma 1. So, I can compute angle gamma 1. So, in computing this angle gamma 1, what I am doing? I am making use of alpha and beta and d, which are kind of independent measurements than theta 1 and theta 2. Similarly, if you go to the triangle S, B, C, you can also compute the angle S, B, C. So, the S B C angle is here. You can also compute this angle similarly. This is let us say 
gamma 2. Fine, we have determined this angle. When we have determined this angle, I can now easily find the angle over here and if this point is H. So, working in the triangle S, A and H, I can find this angle. So, I know the value of the angle here. So, I can write this angle as, if I go to the second slide, B, angle B, H, C, that is equal to 180 minus alpha plus gamma 1. You can check it also, whether we are writing the correct thing or not, because this angle H, A, H, S is 180 minus alpha plus gamma 1. So, similarly this angle also. Well, if we know this angle B, H, C, I can now compute the value of angle A, C, B or theta 3 directly now. So, the theta 3 can be now computed. So, theta 3 will be 180 minus 180 minus alpha plus gamma 1 plus gamma 2. So, this entire thing can be reduced to alpha minus gamma 1 minus gamma 2. Well, what we have found here? What we have found here, if you can check, just solve it, you will find it should be plus. We found a value of theta 3, which has yes, some influence of our first approximation, but at the same time, this theta 3 has also influence of alpha, beta and d. So, this is how we can determine an independent value of theta 3, which we will then treat as an independent measurement hands on. Now, in this case, our S was located towards left of C, but there are many more possibilities. Our S could be here, S could be here or S could be here and depending where the S is, whether the direction accordingly the computations can be done. Now, we will see one important thing of the triangulation that is intersection. Now, what is the meaning of this? The meaning is in triangulation, for example, here we establish the stations in the field. These stations are for example, A, B and C. After we have done the triangulation, we know the coordinates of these stations. The meaning of intersection is, if we are moving somewhere in the field, for example, let us say, I am somewhere here, I am moving here or let us say, at this point, there is a temple and we want to determine the coordinate of the temple, but because you can see the temple, but you cannot occupy it or maybe for some reason, if this is a water body you cannot go to this area, but you can see this particular tower there. So, it is possible for you to intersect this, but not stand on this. So, in that case, our aim is to determine x p, y p, what are the coordinates of this point p. So, what we will do, we will make use of intersection in order to compute those coordinates. The meaning is, I will stand at a and from A, I will measure, let us say the angle alpha, this is possible, triangle, the triangulation station A is our station, we can measure angle alpha. Similarly, I will go to let us say B and from B also, I will measure the angle beta. Once I have done it, now using the coordinate of A, x A, y A, and the angle alpha, I can write the equation of line A P. Similarly, for B, I can write the equation of line B P. Now, solving these equations for their intersection, where these, these two lines they intersect, I can compute the coordinate of P. So, what we are doing this way, we are computing the coordinates of a point 
which we cannot occupy. Well, right now what we have done, we have measured only alpha and beta these two angles. If there is some error in measurement of alpha, is there any check? Yes, we can go for a check. Let us say I also occupy C and from the C, I measure the angle gamma. So, by bisecting B and P. So, what I can do? I can repeat the same set of calculation in this triangle also or maybe I can solve the problem now by the least square. So, I will have the coordinates of point P. So, this is called the method of intersection. Next, which is similar to it, but slightly different, we will see a method of call resection. This is called method of resection. Now, what is the resection? The resection is slightly different. The same set of A, B and C are our triangulation stations. We know their coordinates. So, if we know their coordinates, that means we have a coordinate system and in that coordinate system, I know their coordinates. Let us say the C is there. In this coordinate system, I know these coordinates. Let us say you are wandering there in the field somewhere. You are just wandering in the field somewhere here and by standing at a point, you are standing somewhere for example, let us say over here and by standing at this point and taking observations to A, B and C, you want to determine where you are. This point is P, so X P, Y P, this is what you want to compute. So, now the situation is different. You are not taking observations from A, B or C, rather you are taking observations where you are you are standing on some field, you want to know what, what is the coordinate of this point. So, how to do that? Again in this case, you will be measuring the angles. For example, I can measure the angle A P B, let us say this angle is alpha, then I can also measure the angle B P C, this angle is beta. When I am saying the angles, I mean we are measuring the angles in the horizontal. Okay? Well, having known these two angles, can we determine the coordinates of x p and y p? Now, this is a very simple problem. One solution of this could be, though you can solve it by many methods, one solution of this could be, if this angle is, let us say theta. So, within this figure A, B, C and P, I can write this angle edge s minus theta. Now, what is s here? s is sum of you know 360 minus alpha minus beta minus the angle here. That is s. So, I can write this angle edge s minus theta. Okay? So, s is a constant. You can find the value of s. Well, having done this, what I can do? I can write now in triangle A, B, P for length B, P by using the sign rule, I can write for B, P as because I know the length A, B. A, B length is known to me because I know the coordinates of A and B. So, I can compute this length. So, A, B by sin of alpha, the alpha is being measured, multiplied by for B p, B p by sin into and over here it will be sin of theta. So, if I write it again, it will be B p is A b sin of theta by sin of alpha. Similarly, in triangle B C P. I can again write for B P. Again by using the sign rule, I can write here B P is B C sine of S minus theta divided by sine of beta. Well, 
in this equation number 1 and number 2 dp is same the left hand side is same so i can equate these two if i equate these two the only unknown because we know ab we know bc we know s we know alpha we know beta the only unknown will be theta which you can compute so once you know the value of theta having known this having known this you can compute the coordinates of xp yp well now what we will do we have seen the triangulation so far we have seen the application of the tri triangulation also or oh, maybe some more things like what do we do by the resection there what do we do by the intersection there all those things we have seen now we are going to talk about one more aspect of establishing the controls that is called the trilateration as in the case of the triangulation we understood it that triangulation is done in order to establish a control network in the field now why we did the triangulation what are the basic aim for that because we have to measure only single length while we can measure all the angles and the computations can be done the co coordinates can be generated we also discussed this thing that measuring length was difficult in earlier times when the edmi was not there we, that's why we would only measure a single length but measuring angle is easier you don't have to go and traverse the land you have to just stand on a point bisect the targets and the angle is known to you so because of this reason the triangulation was very much in practice but now because the edmi is available and with the edmi the electronic distance measuring instrument what you can do you can measure the lengths very accurately and very fast so something comes to the mind cannot we use edmi to establish control network again by using the same chain of triangles so what we will do here in this case instead of measuring in case of triangles we are measuring one length and three angles cannot we do one more thing that we measure all three lengths well my triangle is triangle is solved i know all three lengths because ultimately in triangulation also in order to compute the coordinates what you did we made use of these angles for computing the lengths finally we are computing these lengths there so this kind of triangulation figure where all lengths are measured the figure could be anything we'll talk about that in a moment but all the lengths are measured here this is called trilateration so this is the another method of establishing control in surveying now now what we will do we will compare our trilateration with triangulation how where they stand together you know we are measuring distance with edmi is very easy you can measure these distances very fast okay the number of the observations which you have to take is less than in case of the angle because in case of the angle you have to for example to measure this angle alpha you have to bisect here you have to bisect here then you have to measure then you will know the angle but in this case and also you have to take the reading this reading and this reading but in the case of the edmi as you understand so far what you have to do in order to know this length you have to just bisect the target here and the length will be known similarly in order to know this length you have to bisect the target here and the length will be known so it was considered earlier that this trilateration because the distances will be measured very fast can be a better con method of establishing the control so now we should try to see whether is it really so or not whether this triangulation is really a better method or triangulation is a better, better method or can we go for a figure where both angles as in this case three angles and as well as three lengths are measured which one is better so we'll try to see these things now so what we'll do we'll start with advantage of trilateration
Okay, number one advantage that we can cite is it is rapid because straight away you are measuring the distances. In the case of triangulation, we would compute those, but here we are measuring them directly. So, it may be considered to be the rapid method. Number two, a very important thing is it can control scale error. Now, what is scale error? Let us see this first. The scale error is as we know in any network of triangles, we start from a measured length which is called a base length. Let us say it is A B. Then we have all these angles measured and knowing this length and all the angles, we would compute the other lengths. We have also seen that error and in angle, because all the angles which we are measuring here, whether this or this or this has some error and this error propagates. Propagates means when we are computing the length here, let us say this is length finally x y. So, in computing this length x y, we will have some error, which is a result of the error in our initial a b as well as the important thing as well as how my angles are, how much is the error in the angle. We know now in computing x y, we will have some error and this error is because of the error in a b and as well as the errors in all these angles, all these angles here. Not only the error in the angles, it also depends upon what is the size of the angle, because we are making use of the sine rule. We have seen that al already. We have seen how the error propagates, how it depends upon the size of the angle. So, but whatever the case, we know in case of triangulation, there will be some error finally in computing our length. So, this error we say the scale error. Now, in the case of the triangulation, sorry, trilateration, what we are doing, we are measuring these lengths directly, we are not computing these. So, there is no question as such of scale error. So, this scale error is controlled. What we will see after seeing these advantages, we will see now some disadvantages. Disadvantages of trilateration. Starting with number one, in case of trilateration, you are measuring these three sides. In case of the triangulation, we measure these three angles. Now, in case of this triangulation, we can say this theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. So, sigma theta should be equal to 180 degrees. Our observations in the triangulation should satisfy this condition. Is there any similar condition, geometric condition for the lengths also? Can I say something, you know any kind of relationship with a function of these lengths? Can I say it that it, they should follow some relationship? We cannot. Whatever the lengths we have measured L 1, L 2 and L 3, whatever, they will always form a triangle. Always the resulting angles will sum to 180 degrees, but this is not so here. In case of triangulation, this sum of three angles theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 will not be equal to 180 degrees, because my theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 has some errors in them. So, in the case of the triangulation, we have a way out of adjusting these errors, because we know there is an error, but in case of trilateration, even if error is there, we do not know. So, in order to reach conditions like this, 
the trilateration figure becomes very complex. A simple triangle like this has one geometric condition. The sum of these three angles should be 180 degrees. But this is not so in a simple figure like this. In order to have a similar geometric condition in trilateration also, our figure will become complex. So, this is one disadvantage of trilateration that our figures will become more complex or rather we can say our internal conditions, internal angle conditions are not there. These are not there as in case of the triangulation. Well, the second disadvantage is as we know in trilateration we measure the distances. If we have a hill like this and we are interested in knowing the horizontal distance between these two points B and A, in triangulation we do measure the horizontal angles. We do not measure the angles in a sloping plane, rather we measure the angles always in a horizontal plane and this is how the theos light is made. So, directly there by the computations we compute the horizontal length, but in the case of trial iteration we are measuring the sloping distances. So, this sloping distance which has been measured needs to be finally reduced to its horizontal component. How can we do it? Either we should know the R L, the reduced level of these two points or I should know the vertical angle V t. So, in order to do it, we again end up taking some extra measurements, either the vertical angle or the heights of these two points. Then only this job can be done. So, this is another problem. Then the third problem with the trial iteration is, because we are using here EDMI for the measurement. In case of a triangle, our length of the side could be of order of 2 kilometer, 3 kilometer, 5 kilometer, 10 kilometer, we know it. In case of triangulation, we have seen that. Now, in case of triangulation, what we did, if we are at A, we put our third light at A and then we bisect the target at B and target at C and we know the angle C A B. But in case of EDMI, I am measuring the distance A C. How we are measuring the distance? We are putting our EDMI here and our reflector here and the electromagnetic wave is sent to the target and then it will be reflected back and reaching here. So, by measuring the time of travel, we know the distance. So, we have seen this principle of EDMI before in one of our lectures and we know the accuracy of EDMI will depend upon how accurately we can represent the atmosphere in between this column here in the instrument, because once the instrument is actually making the computations, we should input the actual atmospheric conditions, because this is what on which the C will depend, the speed of light. So, we should not use the C for vacuum, no, we cannot, we have to use it for the actual atmospheric conditions. Now, measuring those actual atmospheric conditions across this length of 2 meter is not a possible task, we cannot do it. So, because of that reason, there will be some error again in these length measurement. This is another disadvantage of trilateration, while in the case of the triangulation, we are measuring only one single length. For one single length, we can take all the precautions we can try to measure that length you know in small parts or maybe 100 times and or maybe we can also sample our atmosphere in between so that we know this length to the best possible accuracy so this is not possible in the case of tri trilateration because you can't do this thing for all the lengths of the network now we will see 
that what all field work is involved in trial iteration. You can guess it also now very well because you have seen the field work which is required in case of triangulation and generally the field work is nearly same. So, the very first step in trial iteration will be also reconnaissance survey. The meaning is this is this is the most important part of any survey because your proper planning will govern the work later on. In the reconnaissance survey, what you do? You observe your area through maybe some using some previous maps or by visiting the area by talking to people and then you establish your trial iteration stations. In establishing these, if your triangles are very large, intervisibility is a problem, then again over here you would like to go for some kind of towers, so that you can measure the distances. So, you will observe the stations. Well, in observing these stations, in establishing these, again some of the things which should be made clear or rather we should ensure these now, that I will select these two stations for trial iteration, taking care that in between there are not any kind of hot spots in the atmosphere or maybe there is no industry here, because if there is industry, the atmospheric condition over here in between will be different, we cannot sample it. Also, we should ensure that the line of sight or the laser pulse, which we fire from here, which goes to the other target it should be away from the ground, it should not graze the ground. So, these are the things which we should keep in mind in establishing our stations. At the same time, we know that we have to go for a figure as in the case of triangulation. Here also we have to make a triangulation figure in the field. So, what kind of triangulation figures are possible here? Now, here the figures which are generally adopted are the brace quadrilateral, where you are measuring all these lengths. Then also a corresponding figure, one more figure could be and this is an important observation, important in the sense as we discussed earlier also that triangulation by measuring the angles provides better geometric conditions for our checks for adjusting the angles, which is not so in trial iteration. In order to have the same kind of internal checks or geometric conditions in our observation, our figure will become more complex. One example here is in triangulation, if we have a figure of base quadrilateral where you observe only these 8 angles and we have here 4 conditions. The condition means, we will talk about these conditions later on, but condition means as the condition here in case of triangle is sigma theta should be 180 degree. In a simple triangle there is one condition. So, here we have 4 conditions in a brace quadrilateral. If we do trial iteration, we will have to make a pentagon and in this pentagon also we will have to observe all 10 lengths. If you observe all these 10 lengths, you have taken the measurements, 10 measurements here then these two will have near same number of internal conditions. So, what we see here our figure becomes more complex in order to have, have the same number of internal conditions and we will see this when we will be talking about the adjustment why these internal conditions are important and we have looked into it also a little bit so far in our lectures. So, we can go for a figure like this then many researchers they have suggested that the best figure 
in trilateration is a hexagon with all the sides measured. All possible sides, whatever you can think of, all these are measured here. That is the best figure, this is what it is said and it has 10 conditions and 20 observations. So, we will need to go for this kind of figures in order to have good geometric conditions in our trilateration figures. Well, having selected whatever the figure we are going for, these are the ideal cases, not always this is possible. So, whatever the figure we have chosen, the next step will be of course, measuring the lengths or distances, we are measuring the distances, the sloping distances and the vertical angles and we are con reducing these vertical or the sloping distances to the horizontal equivalent or the horizontal component. So, this is actually the field work. One more thing that we do, again as in the case of triangulation, we will also observe bearing of one line that is a theta, because we know now, because we will have to observe this bearing in order to compute these coordinates. So, all these things will be involved in doing the triangulation in field. Next, what we will see, we will see how we can go for computation and adjustment. So, right now we will only see the concept of adjustment first, this is important. What is it, what do we do in this and the actual methods of adjustment we will see later on. Well, for a simple case, if there is a triangle for which we have observed theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, all these three have been observed. Obviously, sigma theta will not be equal to 180, we know it because all these observations will have some error, but the condition in the field it says that sigma theta should be 180. So, what we try to do, we try to adjust these errors we try to find okay, what is the amount of correction which is required to this angle, what is the correction which is required to this angle, what is the correction which is required to this angle. If we know in our angles, we have some systematic error, we know the con already about the systematic error. If there is some systematic error in our angles, we will eliminate it by writing the physical model. So, from theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, if the systematic error is there, we will first eliminate that. Even after eliminating systematic error, let us say I write it as theta 1 dash, theta 2 dash, theta 3 dash. Still, sigma theta dash will not be 180, because we have in our angles the random errors which cannot be eliminated by writing a physical model, because we do not know where from these were. So, in our what we do the adjustment procedure, what we are talking about is done for these random errors. We adjust it, so that our condition sigma theta is 180 is satisfied, because this is what is so there in the ground. Well, that was a simple case of a triangle, but we may have let us say a figure like this, where all these angles are measured. Now, there will be many more conditions here, there could be a condition that sum of all the, if I highlight it, sum of all the angles within this triangle should be 180, as well as sum of all the angles within this triangle should be 180. If I first adjust my red triangle, I adjust this one, I change this angle, this angle, this angle, 
this angle and then I do it for the blue one. I again change this angle, this angle, now again this angle is being changed. If I change, adjust it for blue, the red will not be adjusted. If I adjust it for red, the blue will not be adjusted. Similarly, there are many more triangles here. So, what we do, we go for a method in which we take all these observations together. We treat this everything as one system and by least square, we adjust all these angles so that all the conditions within this figure are satisfied. So, this is adjustment. Now, in our computation and adjustment, first of all, let us say in case of triangulation, we have done a triangulation where this length is known. First of all, all these angles are adjusted. Now, the figure could be anything. We may have some base quadrilaterals also there. So, first of all, all the angles are adjusted. Angle adjustment. Number two step in the computation is, is starting from the bearing of a known line. Now, the angles have been adjusted. We have measured the bearing of a known line. What we will do? We will compute the bearing of all lines. Once the bearings of all the lines in the triangulation figure has been computed, our next step will be, we will start from the known line and we will start computing these lengths. Having computed all the lengths, again by, by, by the best possible route, what we will do, the strongest route, what we will do, we will compute the coordinates. So, if I know the coordinate of my initial station, which we can assume or we can take from some national reference or national system. I know now the coordinates of all other stations here and this is where the computation of triangulation is over. Our end product at this stage is a map where all these points are the triangulation stations and we know their coordinates. This we can use later on. Now, this, this procedure how we do it in case of trilateration. In case of trilateration, number one, because trilateration means we have these complex figures, okay. maybe let us say a simple chain like this, where all these lengths are observed. What we do, we start because we have to go for the adjustment. So, the procedure generally which is followed is using these lengths L 1, you know whatever the length we have observed, what we do, we compute the internal angles. First of all, we compute the internal angles using the cosine rule. So, in any triangle, using these three sides, I can compute the angles. After computing the angles, we put those angles here inside. Okay. So, all the angles are computed. So, we know these angles, which are computed angles and then later on for these computed angles, we go for the adjustment. As in the case of the triangulation. So, after computing these internal angles using the lens, the procedure is nearly same as in case of the triangulation. We adjust those angles, then we again after adjusting our lens or sorry the angles, we compute the corrected lens and then we compute the coordinates. Now, we will try to see one more aspect of establishing control network that is called triangulation. Now, as the name is there, in this case the idea is we will be measuring all the lengths as well as all the angles. Now, we have a instrument which is called total station. We have seen this instrument also and it is possible with the total station that you can simultaneously measure the angles 
as well as the length. For example, if you are standing here, you can measure the sloping distance to this point as well as you can measure the sloping distance to this point. At the same time, your total distance is giving you the horizontal angle. The total distance is also giving you the vertical angles. So, making use of this, this we will say of course, if in a figure we have all the angles measured as well as all the lengths measured, our figure is very strong figure. There is lot of redundancy in the figure. So, now with the availability of the total station, if we are going for very precise survey, we are going to establish a very, very precise, very accurate control network. We would like to go for triangular iteration. Okay, now, at this stage, we have gone through almost all the steps of triangulation and trial iteration. I will not say, you know, in a very comprehensive way, but something which is limited within the scope of this video lecture series. What we saw here, is starting from triangulation, then trial iteration, triangular iteration, all these are the methods of establishing control, whether it is vertical control or horizontal control, more importantly the horizontal control. In case of the triangulation, we are measuring the angles, all the angles in the triangulation figure and only one or two lengths. But in the case of the trial iteration, as we saw today, we are measuring all the lengths in a network. And by using these observations, which we are doing in the field, by taking, you know, eliminating the errors, which are possible in the field, what we do, we do the computation. And at the end of the computation, what we get, we get the coordinates of all our control points or stations. Now, these coordinates or the control points can be used later on for varieties of purposes. As we will see later on, when we talk about the plane tabling, how we can make use of these coordinates in plane tabling because in plane tabling, we will make use of this network. Let us say there is a big network here and these distances are of the order of 1 kilometer. Now, I want to make the map here. I want to fill the details in my map because so far in my map, in my drawing sheet, I have only these stations plotted, nothing else. Now, I want to plot the other things, where the roads are, where the houses are, I want to plot everything. So, for this plotting, we will go for one more method, which is called plane tabling, and then we will make use of these control points or control networks. Otherwise, also we, when we begin talking about this triangulation, we saw some applications of the triangulation. So, we finish this triangulation here. Thank you.